the day and I'm just chilling out about to throw together some dinner for myself before I head to the gym. And um, I'm chilling out here with this Ahmad Black Currant Tea. I purchased this the other day with my mom, you see? And I'm really enjoying it. This is hibiscus and rose hips. This is like a hip hopera in your mouth <laughs> with all the hips and the hibs. <laughs> it's like an old school throwback. Okay, yeah. Um, rose hip, black currant berries, apple, licorice, Blackberries, I said already, strawberries. This is a fruity boo 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 right, right, right here in my cup. This is the way to get your rose hips. That, that, that's my philosophy. Ingest, ingest them, enjoy them. Yeah, and that's just my pure one mug. Totoro is, uh, Totoro is down for a nap since it's the end of the day and he usually is awake in the morning. And by Totoro, I mean my cup. Or there he is on my fridge back there. But speaking of my boo, Totoro, peeking at us back there, um, over the past few weeks, I have uh, been entertaining a new guest in my home, if you will. I haven't quite introduced you all, but don't you worry, today you shall meet. Um, and I will show you this uh, new guest in action for dinner prep with a little recipe and uh, tutorial. So uh, that is what is going on today on the vlog. All right, so this is the new creature who has been living in my home. This is the Kasari six quart pressure cooker. Um, and I have to admit, I have been thinking about a pressure cooker for a long time. I mentioned a few cooking videos back that my grandmother always used a pressure cooker and I've never really used one before. I know the Instapot thing is all the craze. My mom just got one, as you guys saw in the vlogs this past weekend. Um, so I got this um, about a month ago, honestly, and I've been using it on a nearly consistent basis now. I would say daily. Um, and I really, really do like it. So it is a six quart pressure cooker, but it also, just like the Instapot, you know, it will do meat stew, um, white rice. You can um, also, it, it will also function as a slow cooker, so as a crock pot. Um, you can also do hot pot. There's also a saute function, so you can saute directly into the um, pot, and then you can add in other ingredients and switch over to beans and chili or, um, you know, meat stew. So that's really cool that you can just do everything in one pot. You can also make yogurt in here, which reminds me I should get back on that bandwagon of making my own vegan yogurt. Um, you can do brown rice, um, a variety of grains, soups, poultry. So these two settings I haven't used. Um, I haven't used the pasta um, boil setting yet. Um, apparently you can bake a cake in here, steam potatoes, steam vegetables, and then the one I've really been using the most of, honestly, I've been using the soup, the beans, chili, and the steamed vegetables um, a fair amount. And I have been really, really pleased with how this is working, and it saved me a ton of time. Um, I, what I really liked about the Kosari um, instructions in comparison just to my mom's experience with the Instapot is that their instruction manual was really, really thorough, okay? I mean, yeah, they show you like what all the pieces are here, what all the settings and buttons do, but then it goes, what I really like is it goes step by step through each of the different settings that you might wanna do as far as how, how to go about them and how to adjust the time. So, you know, they go step by step for how to do it as a slow cooker. They go step by step for how to do it as a, how to make pasta or, you know, do something for boiling, how to saute. So it is really, really clearly spelled out. Hot pot, um, tons of, of, I mean, just spoon feeding you how to do this. I'm really enjoying it. And the recipes in here, while not all plant-based, they did have a lot of vegan plant-based type recipes, and it was kind of kind of a nice little recipe book that comes with it, gives you some ideas of what it might be useful for. So I've shown you the front of it. It is six quarts, and this is the interior. So you can see I've been using it already a fair amount. I just wash out the interior with a little bit of soapy dishwasher, sorry, a little bit of soapy dishwater, uh, just soapy warm water, and uh, I think I just encrusted some cinnamon down there. You can see I've baptized the rim here with cinnamon. I use it, I've really been using it every night, I'm not even joking. Um, and this is the steamer tray, um, which works really well. It came with the two kind of rice ladle type things in this cup. Um, and then this is the special 
special lid to switch it on over to a crock pot. Um, and then it also has an extra, an extra rubber ring thing for making a seal, sealing ring. There you go. Um, and you know, it's like any other pressure cooker. You've got your um, stopcock and your pressure valve. And so it is pretty straightforward. Yeah, so in the beginning, I was resistant as a starch to this because you know how I am. I'm a creature of habit. I don't like bringing new things into the, my living space. Um, everything has a place where it lives. My kitchen already is limited in storage and I didn't know if I was gonna like this, how it was gonna hold up in comparison to my crock pot. I have really been loving it. I've honestly used it every single day since getting it and have not been disappointed by it yet. Um, I mostly use it to make beans, soups, and steamed vegetables, but um, I've just really been pleased as punch with, with the performance. Um, I found a nice storage space for it in my pantry, and it kind of forced me to organize my pantry a little bit. Um, and I still do have my Proctor Silex crock pot. I will definitely not get rid of that. It's living above my refrigerator. And... So before I get started, this morning I put a third of a cup of um, red beans or adzuki beans into um, two cups of water and I've just had it soaking throughout the day, um, which is totally hands off. You don't actually need to soak the legumes before cooking them in the um, pressure cooker, but it does cut down on the time substantially and since soaking is a, is a no-brainer hands off thing, I just kind of like doing that. Because I soaked them, they will cook really fast in the kosari. Um, it'll take about five minutes. Um, so in the amount of time that it takes for them to cook, um, I can get the rest of the ingredients out of the pantry and get going. So this is pretty expeditious. All right, so I've just put them in the pot with about two cups of water. And now I'll just put the lid on. And it's pretty easy. You can see you have the unlock setting here and then you just push it down and turn it to lock. Okay, I have it unplugged currently. And then the only real little um, housekeeping step is to make sure that is down and appropriately so. Um, and then you plug her in and it beeps at you. And you can see it's completely blank. I wanna do beans. And normal medium is probably what I would use if I hadn't pre-soaked these, but I'm gonna go to adjust. Um, if they were a harder bean that hadn't been pre-soaked, I might do longer at 30 minutes, but I'm gonna do less at just a quick five minutes and then I'm gonna hit start. And so what will occur is that these little red uh, hatch marks will go around in a circle until it is heat heat it up and, and then it will beep at you once it, it starts and it will go for five minutes and then it will slow release uh, over a period of approximately 20 minutes. You don't need to slow release over that period though. You can alternatively uh, slow release, quick release from by releasing the valve up here to allow the steam to come out. So if you want, want your beans faster than the five minutes, you are good to go. But um, the other thing uh, you should know about the Kosari and what I like is that it will just default to keep warm after it has run its course. So you can, uh, go about your business if you don't want to eat immediately once it's done cooking. You can also delay the start a certain amount of time and you can, um, you know, keep it on cook, keep warm if you've stopped it and started it. So it's got a variety of different little tricks, spells, and whistles to allow you to manipulate it, but it also has these pretty easy no brainer settings down here. So those are going to get going now and I will assemble the rest of my ingredients. All right, so that proved to be more expeditious than me. And I'm going to go ahead and quick release, but I'm gonna protect myself here with my, with my classy. <laughs> All right, so just a quick release here, I'm going to hit stop, cancel, and then we're just gonna pop it, pop it real slow. The steam that comes out of this is a little hot, so be careful. That's why I'm using a uh, one of my custom pot holders that was engineered for me by my mother. And yeah. So now we're just going to take the lid off and it goes delete. And you may wonder why I drain the cooking water off. I think it's because, the reason I do it is because the when the beans cook, they release 
substances that can be difficult to digest and lead to socially awkward moments, if you will. So that's why I cook them and then drain the cooking liquid off and put them back in. And now I can just dump the rest of my ingredients in and this is gonna be really fast. So I'll show you what else goes into this um, fun little gamish. All right, so for the veggies, I just have here about a cup of chopped cabbage. These are just the stems of uh, broccoli, of uh, the bulk broccoli that I buy. Um, I keep them and then chop them up and put them into soups. They flavor it a little bit, something, something extra. Um, a generous knob of ginger peeled and chopped up with one clove of garlic into a semblance of a dice. Um, or mince, mince dice hybrid, MD. <laughs> um, about a quarter of a cup of chopped white onion and about, uh, I don't know, the equivalent of like three slivers worth of, uh, the equivalent of maybe three slices of, of bell pepper uh, chopped up. So I'm just gonna dump all of this into the pot there with the adzukis. So update on the reading front as I dump my veggies in by the fistful here. My hands are clean, by the way. I clean them with my <laughs> sweet little attitude, attitude hand soap. Um, update on the reading front. You know I finished Eliza and Her Monsters this weekend. I just started uh, the uh, My Absolute Darling that you guys recommended, and I have to say, I'm wondering if I'm gonna be able to finish it. It is, it is not a light read. And by light read, I mean it is emotionally taxing. I feel as though I have just uh, been in a car accident every time I start reading it, you know. It is really earthquaking, shaking, disturbing. Personally, I have difficulty reading books about child abuse. Um, so I'm having a hard time with it and it may be hard for me to finish. It is a good read. It is pretty well written and I can see why it's popular, but I can't say that it's a nice light time read and it should not be part of your sleep hygiene. I'm also gonna be throwing in um, some enoki mushrooms that I have here um, because I just love these. They flavor everything so nice and delicious and they kind of turn into noodles. But, <clears throat> still loving that Fatalabo sunscreen, by the way, that I introduced into my lineup, as you guys saw this morning. Um, and then candle update, I am burning the, uh, the flippin' awesome <laughs> pumpkin, what is it, pumpkin pecan, well, I don't know, some kind of waffle. It doesn't smell like a waffle. Um, I mean, I haven't had waffles in decades, but doesn't smell like a waffle to me. It does smell good, but I can only burn those Bath and Body Works candles for like an hour at a time because they put out quite a bit of fragrance and then I feel as though my whole home is, is adequately scented and I don't need to, I don't need to proceed. Um, I want a lot of mushrooms today. I'm feeling generous. Feeling generous on the Anokis. I picked these up at H Mart. Um, they're like two for a dollar, two big bunches for a dollar, a bunch. A bunch gets you a bunch of recipes. You can get about four four individual meals worth, you know, additions as an add-in to meals for meals for one. All right, which is what this is. This is a veggie mushroom uh, soup, by the way. Now I'm just adding some fresh sliced peeled lotus root. Look how cool. If you don't have lotus root, well, I'm sorry, <laughs> I get mine at H Mart, <laughs> just kidding. Well, I mean, yeah, I do get it at H Mart. If you don't have lotus root, don't fret. You can be in the club too, um, but uh, just use, I don't know, turnips, rutabaga. Lotus root is just a, a root vegetable. It's delicious though. It kind of looks like something, um, you know, you might see in an alien movie, like that landed off of a UFO, right? Um, I love this stuff. All right, and now we are gonna spice things up. All right, so following the UFO, I'm just gonna put a teaspoon of the Dynamo. Can you see it there? Focus, there we have it. Dynamic health. <laughs> organic coconut aminos. This is non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan. Um, I can't remember what the U stands for. Halal um, certified as well. And uh, what else? 
Oh, but this doesn't have the never been irradiated uh, claim to fame that uh, some of the other foods I have uh, boast, but oh well, dynamic health. You could use uh, soy sauce if you wanted to, tamari. Um, it's quite good though. I like this dynamic health stuff. It only has, in one teaspoon, it has only 25 milligrams of sodium, which for a soy sauce-esque thing, which is there, there's no soy in this, FYI, it's coconut based. Um, that's, that is stellar. Um, I don't like a lot of salt in my food. All right. I'm just going to put in some, uh, organic parsley from Walmart here. Just Dustin. Like the name, Dustin. <laughs> and I'm also going to put in, I have been making my way through Coleman's mustard. Comment below on if you have a spicy Asian mustard powder or mustard seasoning could upgrade to, but I'm just gonna put in, I don't know, roughly a teaspoon of that, that stuff. It's taken me forever to use up, but almost there, almost there. And I'm gonna do a bunch of flicks from the wrist. I'm gonna put the carpal tunnel into, into a little bit of distress here and uh, do some chili powder. Getting wild, that's a lot of flickage, okay. I don't stop there. I'm gonna put in a teaspoon of chili garlic sauce from these folks. I'm gonna do maybe about half a teaspoon just to keep it conservative on the salt. I've already got garlic in there, so. And then I'm gonna dust in some sesame seeds because that always gives everything a nice taste. I love these roasted black ones. They are really fantastic. And should almost start a club of people who walk around with black sesame seeds stuck in their teeth. It should just be like the cool look because I'm pretty sure that's me. But anyway, that is basically the extent of this recipe. So I'm just gonna put the lid on. Yeah, I was a little, I was resistant as a start to uh, bringing this into my life because I didn't know how much space it was gonna occupy or how much of my time it was gonna occupy, but it's actually saved me quite a bit of time uh, because this soup where I, as I would have let it slow cook in my, my crock pot for about three, four hours, uh, this bad boy will be done in approximately 25 minutes. So that is not bad at all. Well, Kosari finished so fast, I uh, forgot to tell you guys, you've got to add uh, about a cup and a quarter roughly of water. Don't forget that. Um, but I didn't even hit start or anything actually. I uh, went to the gym, came back, um, took a shower, came out of the shower, and I just put it on the... Um, I put it on soup mode and I did it on the low less time one so about um, 15 minutes and then I kept it at warm while I got some work done and we've got a delicious mushroom and lotus uh, adzuki bean soup here that is going to be so so good Ooh, I'm flogging you guys up so I'm gonna plate that and get to dining but yeah, I'm totally in love with this Kasari. I really have been happy with it so far. I, I actually recommend it if you're in the market for a pressure cooker. Um, I think it offers a lot and is really good quality. I've been ha happy with it. I've been using it for about three, three to four weeks consistently now with no problems. And I think it's a good one. I will list it down below if you guys are in the market for one. But um, I can't wait to come up with some fun recipes for you guys. Comment below on how you use your pressure cooker. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.